Hello, my name is Jean Weeb. Would you look at the globe with me? You've all looked at the globe, I'm sure, in your school classrooms. You may have some of these at home. You've probably found where you live on the globe. We live in North America where we're making this program. I want you to look at the orbit that the Earth takes around the sun. The Earth doesn't just go in a perfect circle around the sun. It takes the shape that's on this poster. Can you tell me what shape that is? An ellipse. This is an elliptical orbit that the Earth takes. Well, the Earth turns also on its axis as though it had a stick all the way through it. So the Earth turns around so that we have night and day, time to work and time to sleep. And the Earth goes around this orbit, this elliptical orbit, and it moves around two directions at the same time. So the Earth comes around like this, turning on its axis once every day, and all the way around the sun, making one whole year. Good. Now then, the Earth has something else special about it. It's tilted a few degrees. It's not straight up and down. When it goes around the sun, it's tilted just a little bit. Look at this picture over here on this side. When the Earth is on, in this position, it's the furthest away from the sun. And the top half of the Earth is tilted toward the sun. When the, when the Earth is furthest away from the sun, the top half, the northern hemisphere, is tilted a little bit toward the sun. Then it keeps rotating and revolving until it gets around to the point where it's closest to the sun. When the Earth is closest to the sun, the northern hemisphere is tilted a little bit away from the sun. The southern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun. So the sun's light comes to the southern hemisphere and hits the South Pole, really hits parts of South America and Africa and Australia very directly has sunlight. When we're in this position and we're pointed away from the sun is when we're having our winter in the northern hemisphere, which means that the summer, southern hemisphere is having what season? Summer. They're the other, the other direction from us. When we're having winter, they're having summer. When they're having winter, we're having summer. Well, the Earth keeps on rotating and revolving and comes around here, keeping its same tilt till it gets to the place where it's the furthest from the sun. When we're the furthest from the sun in the northern hemisphere, we're having our summer. But we're tilted toward the sun, so we have warm weather. At that point, the Earth is the furthest away from the sun that it ever gets. And look which hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. The southern hemisphere, the south pole. The south pole has the coldest temperatures on Earth. And it's pointed away from the sun when the Earth is furthest from the sun. You got all that? Can you remember that for a minute? I want to show you something else. I want you to look at the top of this globe, at the northern hemisphere. Do you see how much land there is in the northern hemisphere, all separated by parts of different oceans and seas? Water separates the land parts, but there's a lot of land on that end of the Earth. Now look at the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is mostly what? Water. It's mostly water with a little bit of land. That's very special. It's very, very important. What happens when sun hits water? It's reflected, like from a mirror. When the sun is closest, when we're closest to the sun, and the southern hemisphere is having their summer, it's mostly water. So the water 
reflects back a lot of the heat and light from the sun and keeps it from doing any damage, serious damage to the earth. If you've seen pictures of Australia or Southern Africa or South America, in their summer it gets very hot and dry. But that's all right. It doesn't, it doesn't harm anything permanently because all of the heat from the sun doesn't hit that land. Most of it hits the water and is bounced away. And here we are up here in the northern hemisphere turning around and the sun's light is hitting us at a slant. So it's all so healthy for us. We're having our winter when we're turned away from the sun and they're having their summer. Now then, we keep rotating and revolving till we get around here. Now then, the South Pole, the Southern Hemisphere, is having their winter. And it gets very, very, very cold. But that's all right because it's mostly ice and water. And the land parts that we talked about get enough heat from the sun to keep them from being as cold as the South Pole. But we in the Northern Hemisphere, we're just up here rotating around. We're having our summer when we're tilted toward the sun, but we're the furthest from the sun. If this were backwards, what do you think would happen? If we were tilted toward the sun when we're the closest to the sun, we would burn up. We'd be fried. If we were tilted away from the sun when we're the furthest from the sun, we would get much less heat up here and we would, re be, we would freeze. The northern hemisphere could not be inhabited. The fact that the orbit around the sun is elliptical, the fact that it's closest here and a little bit further away on this end is very important. And the way that the land is distributed on the Earth is very, very important. Remember what you've seen here, and I want to show you a little bit of a demonstration that you can try also. This is my imaginary oven. This is my model oven. I did this at home in my real oven, but I don't have it here, so we're going to use this for a demonstration. I have a quarter of a cup of salt and a half of a cup of flour and a quarter of a cup of water. I'm going to mix those things together and make a dough. You've probably done this kind of thing when you made salt dough maps or ornaments of different kinds. So now I've got a nice blobby little mess here that I'm going to put into two little foil pans. You can use any kinds of pans. When we're doing scientific demonstrations, we like to make all the conditions equal so that one side is not unfairly treated. I'm going to put one blob there and one blob there. This is a little bit wet, but it will do. And you can make this into a little round blob, or you can make it into the shape of a continent. Now we have two little continent shapes, which I made into the United States shapes. Uh, you can make them round. You can make them any shape you like. Try to make them both the same size and the same height. And I tried to make the same size pans just to make everything even. Now then, we're going to treat these one as the North Hemisphere and one as the Southern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere is mostly land. The Southern Hemisphere is mostly water. So I'm going to pour water so that it goes around my Southern Hemisphere continent. And then we're going to put these into the broiler, in, under the broiler, into the stove. I'm going to still slit both of these in here. And I did this at home first 
with my real stove. Now we'll just put those under the broiler and leave them there. They're evenly being heated and one is surrounded by water as a continent in the southern hemisphere would be. One is dry as a continent in the northern hemisphere would be. While we're waiting for that to broil, I want you to turn to the person beside you and very quietly tell that person when the earth is closest to the sun over here in this position. Are we having winter or are we having summer in the northern hemisphere? All right, what did you say? Did you say that we are having winter when we are the closest and the southern hemisphere is having their summer when we're the closest to the sun? All right, when we go around rotating and revolving and coming around to this end, now what is the northern hemisphere having? We're having summer when we're tilted toward the sun. Can, I don't know if you can see that little line of equator right there. But when we're tilted, the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, we're having our summer. But we're the furthest from the sun, so we don't get fried. The southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. So it's very, very cold, but it can stand it because cold doesn't hurt water. Now then, let's go back to our oven and take these two pans out and see what happened. We have one continent that was dry and one continent that was wet. And look at the difference. They were in the oven at the same temperature and this one got a great deal more burned because it was dry. This one had water around it. It doesn't right now because I want to, to be able to see the effect of it. But when I put this in my own oven at home, my electric oven, this one was surrounded with water. This one had no water around it. It was dry. If the situation of our earth were different, if the land were distributed differently on the earth, the northern hemisphere would fry when we were closest to the sun, if we were tilted toward the sun. The southern hemisphere is taken care of because when it's closest to the sun it's, and tilted toward the sun, it's surrounded by water. Remember how much water there is in the southern hemisphere. So the way that our earth is set around the sun with its, with its perfect distance at all times of the year and the way that our land is put on our earth is perfect for us to be able to live on the earth. The other planets don't have the same year or the same length of day as we do. The other planets don't have the magnetism that our earth does. The other planets lack a lot of the features of our earth. The things that are on the earth and under the earth and around the earth are perfect for us to live.